It's fair to say the Hyundai Ioniq 5 has taken the EV world by storm since its introduction in 2021. And now the reigning car sales car of the year faces its biggest challenge yet, and it comes in the form of a relative. The new Kia EV6 has touched down in Australia, sharing its key underpinnings with the Ioniq 5 together with a cheaper purchase price, further claimed range, as well as a local suspension tune. Is it enough to topple the champion? Let's find out. The Ionic 5 and EV6 are the talk of town for prospective EV buyers in Australia, with a line around the corner for either as the electric vehicle discussion gains pace in homes and boardrooms alike. Here we have the two entry models of the respective Ionic 5 and EV6 ranges, and it's immediately a $4,000 pricing advantage in favour of the Kia though closer analysis reveals it misses out on some standard equipment in getting to that figure. Another point worth noting here is that at those prices, both vehicles miss out on $3,000 EV subsidies currently offered in several Australian states. The Ionic 5 and the EV6 are both based on the Hyundai Motor Group's new EGMP Global Electric Architecture. They both have rear-mounted electric motors that draw charge from a lithium-ion battery. But a key point of difference with the EV6 is that it's undergone an Australian suspension tuning program and debuts new technology from ZX Sachs called Sensitivity Damping Control. As for whether it makes a difference on road, we'll have to find out. Both models feature ultra-fast 400V and 800V multi-charging capability, plus a vehicle-to-load function that can turn each into a charger on wheels. With so many shared elements, there's not a huge difference when it comes to performance, range and efficiency, at least on paper. The Kia features more advertised power with an additional 8kW and a faster 0-100 to time, but more on that shortly. Crucially, the Kia offers an additional 77 kilometres worth of range, courtesy of its larger battery pack. Connected to a 350 kilowatt fast charger, both vehicles are capable of supplying about 300 kilometres in range in 18 minutes. On a less powerful AC power point, that time stretches to seven hours. The Ionic 5 might cost nearly $4,000 more than the EV6, but that does get you quite a lot more standard equipment, down to standard things like electric seat adjustment and seat heaters and ventilators up front. There's also nicer materials inside the cabin to match, and for what it's worth, I feel like there's been a little bit more of a thought process with this car's design and really upholding the retro theme that you see around the outside as well. For instance, there's a magnetic mood board and there's clever functions you can slide the middle console backwards and forwards to tailor the cabin exactly how you like it. There's even a zero gravity relaxation chair, which allows you to put the chair backwards while you recharge. There are no Hyundai badges located inside the Ionic 5, and like the EV6, the Speedo is located to the left of the instrument cluster, meaning it is occasionally blocked by the steering wheel. The layout is certainly different from a regular Hyundai, down to a stalk shifter on the steering wheel. Yet despite the cool design brief, storage is plentiful, while the infotainment is a cinch to operate and feels fast and intuitive. The Kia feels much more formal in its presentation, and I think it's fair to say that it bears closer resemblance to a traditional internal combustion car, with a centre console, a rotary dial, and just the placement of the key controls. For that reason, it kind of lacks the outright wow factor of the Ionic 5, but it makes up for that with plenty of storage and great space all around the cabin. The EV6 lacks some of the tactility of the Ionic 5 inside, with a couple of harder contact points and sustainable fake leather and suede materials. Even so, it gets the basics right, with sound storage, a better driving position and proven tech. For the price, it's worth noting the EV6 also goes without a 360 degree camera, rear sun blinds and a powered tailgate. In our infotainment checklist, things are closely aligned, with a head-up display the only missing feature across both vehicles. Another feature absent from either is proper remote connectivity with the smartphone, long available in Tesla and now Polestar rivals. We're told that will change in 2023. Safety is likewise strong, though each model is yet to be independently crash-tested. 
It's again line ball where rear seat space is concerned, though the Ionic again scores a small edge for nicer materials and appointments. Now, not surprisingly, the boot space of the Ionic 5 and the EV6 are pretty much line ball as well, based, of course, on the same platform. Similar amount of space, neither is underslung by a spare tyre. That seems to be a theme with new electric cars. There's tie down points in each, and you get kind of pros and cons to each. The Kia, for instance, has these latches here, which allow you to stow the rear seat really quickly. There's no electric tailgate adjustment with the Kia, but it does win back points for space. Now, I'm five foot nine and I can fit under that. It's not the same story with the Hyundai. Things are a lot tighter. So Hyundai Ioniq 5, our car of the year champion and a vehicle that has really made the EV appealing to the masses. When you jump behind the wheel, it's very easy to see why. It's relatively refined, relatively quiet inside the cabin, and it really does get the basics right. The steering is nicely weighted. All the key controls are really nicely modulated. And there's a lot of adjustment with the electric drivetrain. There's four levels of regen braking and quite a bit that you can muck around with to kind of tailor the drive the way you like it. In short, it's not the big, scary electric car that you think it might be. It's much more user-friendly. Agile and zippy around town, the Hyundai cannot match the Kia where acceleration is concerned. Half a second slower to 100 kilometers an hour on test and three tenths slower than its claim. That said, it builds speed effortlessly and even in single motor rear drive form, hardly wants for more power. In an urban environment, the Ionic 5 acquits itself really well, and on billiard table smooth roads, it gives away very little against the Kia EV6, with the exception of road joins and cat's eyes. You'll notice a little bit more thudding through the cabin, and it's not quite as well settled. When you move away from suburbia and onto more rural roads, like I'm driving at the moment, there's a little bit more going on, and it's clear there is some room for improvement with this vehicle. The biggest thing, trying to control Two tonnes of EV mass over bumps is no mean feat, and that's where the Ionic 5 tends to let itself down a little. There's a little bit more happening inside the cabin, and over large amplitude imperfections, you'll notice quite a lot more body motion, particularly vertically in the rear. You'll hit a large obstacle, and it'll tend to jolt its way through the rear of the cabin, and the car kind of bounces its way out of it. It takes longer to recover. Similarly, through corners, if you come up to a fast change in direction, you'll notice more body roll with the Ionic 5 and it needs a little bit more time to regather itself. With that said, there's terrific underlying grip with the 20 inch Michelin sticky tyres and the steering is nicely modulated as well. It's nice and consistent through the rack and it means that even with a little bit more body roll and a little bit more happening inside the cabin, you can happily throw this thing into a corner, it'll hunker down and the underlying stability control suite works quite well. In isolation, the Hyundai is a sound, comfortable and refined machine that gets the basics right. That brings us to the Kia EV6. So the Kia EV6, it too is very user friendly and very approachable and around town it's difficult to separate from the Ionic 5. Of these two vehicles though, it is the one that I jumped into and felt more comfortable and more familiar with the layout. It's a little bit more conventional in that sense. And of these two, I really preferred the seating position with the EV6. You seem to be able to get nice and low on the cockpit. You seem to have the steering wheel reach exactly where you want it. And you just feel more at home and more comfortable straight away. As I said around town, the ride in this car is a little bit more settled, it's a little bit quieter. Over course chip surfaces in particular, it just feels like there's less going on inside the cabin. Then, yes, again, you move away to a more rural setting and the contrast becomes more stark between this and the Ionic 5. It's a much more settled ride. It almost feels as though you have a buffer between yourself and the surface underneath, such as the level of control and composure. You seem to be able to hit big undulations in the road and it doesn't feel like you're in a two-ton car, just the way it recovers and the expediency in which it just reacts to things. It's a lot sharper and a lot more aware of what's going on underneath than the Ionic 5. That's not a slight at the Hyundai, but I just prefer the way the Kia gets down to business. In a performance sense as well, this car feels really controlled and really well mannered through fast changes in direction. You're able to really whip it through and it reacts really nicely and again, doesn't quite feel its weight in the same way as the Ionic 5. 
I found the, the steering tune in this car a little bit inconsistent. I just, for some reason, the, the way that, that it reacts through certain stages of the steering rack, it's not quite as consistent and well uh, versed as the Hyundai Ioniq 5. And I'm sure you would, it's something that you would get used to, but my in instant impression was that I preferred the tune in the Hyundai. A slightly lighter body and tyres that help reduce rolling resistance help the EV6 win the efficiency stakes on test. After a couple of hundred kilometres, it also had a displayed 225 kilometres worth of range versus 168 kilometres for the Ionic 5. The Kia just noses ahead where after sales is concerned. Offered with a two year longer warranty and comparable servicing rates and intervals. It makes this contest a tight one, and in some circumstances, the preference comes down to exactly what you want from your electric vehicle. But as they say in the classics, there can only be one winner. Even with so much in common, it's clear that the Hyundai Ioniq 5 and Kia EV6 are distinctly different cars. The Hyundai really going after design and technology, while the Kia pursues outright performance and functionality. But even with all that in mind and more, it is the Kia EV6 that takes the win in this comparison, setting a new gold standard in the EV class.